I think the idea of factions in this really worked well. You could kind of imagine that there would be people who were that fanatical about not allowing entirely realistic simulations of the real world. And honestly, I was terrified every single time you saw someone turn out to be one of the fanatics. And I don't mean when someone turned around and helped the fanatics, the realists. I mean whenever someone shouted death to insert name here, that was fucking creepy. I think using video games to explore existentialism is a really great idea. And no, the game Existens, or really Transcendens, doesn't seem like any game we know. I don't think it's really supposed to. You know, like I said in the review, this is not meant to be a game that we know or something. It is an accurate simulation of life. And through that, by taking that incredibly important abstract step back, we can look at life. Because we can't necessarily do something about life, and we haven't been outside of it consciously. So it's difficult to think about in terms of what is it and what could it be. But when we have this incredibly realistic simulation, I love that exchange as they're walking through, I think it's the fish gutting plant, which in reality is of course for game pods. We're trapped in this unformed world with no idea what we're supposed to do, something could kill us at any time, who would play this game? It's a game everybody's already playing. Everything said there fits on our actual lives as well as existence. And when they're at lunch and you feel he's in a situation where he has to kill the Chinese waiter, but he doesn't want to. It's that thing of in life, you are in countless situations that you don't want to be in, and you have to play a role that you don't want to play. And you can choose to give in and try to play as convincingly as you can, or you can struggle and fight against it. There is no way in any kind of society, in any kind of life with social relations that you aren't forced into a certain role at certain times. I love how after they leave Transcendence we find out that basically the game was influenced by very strong anti-game, anti-game developer sentiments. That explains why using a game pod is so invasive. Why having a game port installed is like a violent sex act. The guns made up of flesh and bone, the disgusting nature of the fish gutting, it's all been influenced by these two people's very strong hatred of this game that they consider to be a perversion of reality. Honestly, when the ending came up and they suddenly started talking fanatically and then the guns come out, once again guns brought to a character by a dog, which also helped to explain what was with the flesh gun that fires teeth. Then they shoot and shout death to transcendence. My jaw hit the floor. In fact, it might have gone through it. And I understand that originally the very last thing we saw was the Chinese waiter getting shot, or the guy who in Transcendence, in Existence, was the Chinese waiter. I think it's perfect to leave it on them aiming at him right after him having asked, are we still in the game? Jude Law's character asks Allegra Geller, what if this is reality? Then you just shot someone real. At that point, I completely believed that they were now in the real world, and that she had just killed someone real. And that's of course a fear of these very realistic imitations of life. I mean, people have been saying this since the 70s and 80s at least, when movies began to get really openly 
violent and gory. You know, what if someone watches it and then goes out and does it in real life? And I think with a video game, or any direct simulation where the audience truly feel like they are part of it, like they are killing someone inside this virtual reality, that their brain at that point perceives as real, is an even more tangible fear. I mean, we've all had dreams where we, where we wake up, and during the dream we weren't certain that it was a dream. You know, you leave the not real world, come back into the real world, and then you realize that wasn't real. And that's why it's so good that they leave the not real world more than once in this, or seem to. And that's where I think this is really one of the most interesting. It's the one that truly takes the consequence of that concept. Because once you wake up from one fake reality, how can you be sure that what you're in now, now that you've woken up, is the actual reality? You were fooled once before. Not enough movies ask this question. I like that in this movie, when going from game to reality, or vice versa, it's not a big, obvious effect. It's like, they start to bleed into each other. You see the church pews out in the woods. Allegra gets the gear on from one cut to the other. It's like the brain begins to perceive the world around it that it's been shut down to for, you know, the 20 minutes they played. Also because that's, again, similar to how we actually move from a crafted reality to the actual reality. When you wake up, it's not a flash of light, it's not a fancy effect. Reality just starts to bleed into your perception. I also liked how they seem to bring something from existence into the real world. At that time, we don't know that we're actually in a larger game that's transcendence. They bring the disease of the pod back with them. And then there's also how in this game, there is also a game. And in the game, there is yet another game. Inside the fiction is a similar fiction. That's also a very fascinating concept to me. Also the way that the game begins in the state that the players had just been in. They had just been receiving this demonstration. And already there, the thoughts of killing the maker of this game begin to bleed into it. The way that every NPC or other character is a potential enemy, and some of them potential allies, does feel like something that could be in the video game, and also works as the xenophobia of the fanatics. You know, it's a very conservative, very accept what is there, and be wary of anything that you don't already know, that you aren't already very comfortable with and used to. I mean, the moment you're willing to kill someone for something that doesn't directly hurt you, or even directly affect you, that, in fact, won't necessarily hurt or kill anyone, you know? Also, the line, spores, oh no, no, spores, spores! That was spot on, bad game dialogue. Anyway, those are my thoughts on existence. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you next time.